Over the next 33 hours, I'm going to be embarking on a journey that promises to be the biggest challenge of my 15 years of solo travel. This is Mount Kinabalu, a majestic titan soaring above 4,000 meters, the tallest peak in both Borneo and Malaysia. This is an altitude I've never dared to conquer before, and I'll be sharing all of the physical, mental, and emotional hurdles that this mountain will throw at me. And my oxygen level was low, and my heart rate was really high. If you're new around here, I'm Paddy. I climb mountains, ride motorcycles, and just do whatever I can to make the most out of the limited time we have on this beautiful planet. I'm not super fit, <laughs> I'm not a mountaineer, I just love to have adventures, so subscribe if you're new and let's begin this incredible challenge together. So, because this mountain is protected and has a very limited number of climbers allowed per day, you have to book ahead in advance and through special companies. I went through a company called Borneo Calling and it included a pickup from my hotel in a minivan. They organize all your permits, they hook you up with guides. So after watching this video, if you have the courage to attempt Mount Kinabalu as well, check out the links in the description and book through Borneo Calling. This isn't a sponsored thing, I did pay, but you know, I just wanted to promote that this company did a really good job. So anyway, let's begin things down at the start of the trail. Take a deep breath, and let's Quite begin. <laughs> Okie dokie then. And welcome to what I'm hoping won't be, but probably will turn out to be 33 hours of hell. <laughs> <laughs> so behind me there, you can see it. It is quite magnificent. Mount Kinabalu, tallest mountain in Malaysia, tallest mountain in Borneo, 4,000 and something meters. And uh, look, I'll be honest with you, right? I'll be absolutely honest with you. I have not slept for three days. I've been getting a few hours a night and waking up. Um, I'm going through a little bit of a mental situation, a little bit of burnout, a little bit of depression. I don't know what's wrong with me at the minute. Um, but I was really looking forward to this and I did nearly cancel three times. I really was this close to just getting on a flight and leaving and trying to reset, but I got some advice that said make the most of your time. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make the most of it. We're gonna continue and finish on a high. And there was a very big surprise awaiting for you. Uh, if we make it to the summit, tomorrow morning there's an incredible experience. One of a kind, Guinness World Record type of stuff. And I'll explain later, but first things first, we've got six hours hiking up to base camp where I'll stay overnight wake up at two in the morning to get to the summit and attempt the uh, surprise. Good luck. Okie dokie, this is my guide. This is Harry. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. So Harry, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions to help yeah. calm my nerves because mm -hmm. I'm a little bit nervous. Yeah, sir. How is this climb on a on a beautiful sunny morning like this? Will it be fun? Oh uh, yeah, the weather is good. The track uh, condition uh, is good. Not slippery, so yeah, it's going to be fun. Okay. Sure. Sure. I'm glad. I'm yeah. glad. So behind us is the map. I don't really care about the map. We're going up. We're going up. Yeah. So let's just go up. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, as you can tell, I was a bag of nerves going into this climb. You don't really see it that well on camera, but looking up at this gargantuan peak, you really do feel tiny and that this climb is just going to be such a huge undertaking and then coupled with lack of sleep and an underlying anxiety spike, I was really trying to muster up as much positive energy as possible. Thankfully, my guide Harry was there by my side for every single step of the way, and that gave me a lot of reassurance. Are you from Sabah? Uh, I'm a local people here. In local village? village? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was in this area last week uh -huh. or two weeks ago, yeah. and the weather was terrible. Yeah. And I was really uh, 
scared about the weather being bad for this climb. Uh -huh. I mean, it's so beautiful today. Fingers crossed it's going to be like that tomorrow. But uh, according to the forecast, yeah, this week will be uh, clear. And fingers crossed, yeah, the weather is not going to change. Because uh, normally when we have uh, yeah, a typhoon uh, in both Philippines, Taiwan, uh, the tail of the typhoon will be yeah. on the top of the mountain. And there's a typhoon right now yeah. just passing over yeah. Taiwan, so weather yeah. is on its way. Yeah. But uh, hopefully, take a couple of days, I don't know. Try not to think about it. Harry, let's just enjoy. Uh -huh. A nice leisurely six hour hike uphill. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Look around. Stay positive. Okay, so the lovely Harry was just telling me six kilometers to base camp, seven stops little huts along the way with toilets, water and bins and we've just begun. The temperature is very cool, it's not hot and humid, nice fresh air and we're in the jungle zone. Hey buddy. What's up? Yeah good luck with it. Well it's not too humid is it? No it's not humid yeah. at all. I was kind of surprised to be honest. Thankfully, as soon as we began the climb, all of those nerves were quickly subsided and replaced with smiles of joy <laughs> and lots of steep steps as well. <laughs> steep. Okay. One kilometer down, first rest station. Let's get a quick drink, that's it, and keep going. I have to say, Harry is amazing. He's telling me so many interesting things. I've never really had a tour guide who can speak good English, has lots of information. He seems like a really nice guy. Harry was just telling me that he's celebrating the birth of his fourth child. <laughs> Congratulations, mate. Yeah. Two weeks old. Uh -huh. uh, what's his name? Uh, Ahmad Falik. Hamad Falik. Uh, Falik, yeah. And that's his fourth boy. Yeah. So you've got a five-a-side football team now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I said, are you happy? He said, kind of, because now that's four dowries he has to pay. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, can you tell my audience what? How much is the average dowry for a, lo uh, a local here? Yeah, minimum one, maximum uh, seven buffalo. Yes. But, uh, so they, that's their currency yeah. in the village. Yeah. And uh, actually, uh, nowadays most uh, parents they are uh, asking uh, equal to the price of buffalo in the market. And, and the market price is going up. Yeah. Bloody buffaloes. Well, uh, five to seven thousand ringgit collection like, you now for one. Alright, well next time let's hope it's a bloody girl so you can get some of those <laughs> buffaloes back. <laughs> no, congratulations mate. Yeah, thank you. And my sister Josie, if you're watching, she just gave birth oh, okay. a couple of days ago. Uh -huh. Congratulations. But she doesn't know the name yet. Oh, okay. She's just looking at the baby and she's like, I don't know what to call him. <laughs> congratulations Josie, I'll come and see you soon. Love you. Hiking is such a like cluster of emotions. 
you know, from not being able to sleep, from nerves, dread, mixed with a sprinkle of excitement. I couldn't really place my mindset at the beginning, at the car park. But two huts in, yeah. I'm happy. <laughs> my nerves are gone. <laughs> I'm embracing it now. I, do, I just get myself in a in a funk sometimes. I'm definitely my own worst enemy when it comes to challenges and difficulties. Sometimes all you need is a good, nice, clean bit of fresh air and a physical challenge. Of course, this is the honeymoon period <laughs> of the hike. Harry is the only man who's got better calves than me. Look at these. <laughs> Three times a week he goes up here. Three times a week. It's okay, Harry, I'm just waiting for you to flex your muscles. <laughs> oh. Our first view. I don't really want to look at it because it's going to get better at the top, isn't it? With the great weather and the gorgeous trail and Harry, my fabulous guide, I was really on top of the world and with each step and with each kilometre marker that passed us by, I felt happier and stronger than ever before. Third hut, but we're not gonna stop. Vamos. It's so stunning the way the light dances through the trees and the way that the moss captures some of it. It's just, yeah, absolutely gorgeous. I think we're making good time. Third hut, an hour in, four huts to go. That bird song is incredible. That's the mountain taxi. Yeah. So, is, it, is that person injured or just uh, too? No, just uh, too yeah. lazy to walk. So, how much is it to get a lift? Uh, it's uh, depend, uh, but uh, yeah, they will be charged uh, according per kilo. Uh, according to your body weight, actually, ten, ring, ten ringgit per kilo going down, going up is double. Let's say you are eighty, then eight hundred per kilometer. <laughs> yeah, ten ringgit per kilo per kilometer. So it's very expensive yeah. and you have to be embarrassed because uh, it's so... Oh God, that could be me. That could be me. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Uh, My knee might give away. Uh, <laughs> I'll be like, can you call your mate? I need a lift. Uh, Bless him. I mean, he, I, he looked quite old. Uh, yeah. So he just probably gave up. Uh -huh. That's uh, fair enough. We do have a... Okay, 90 minutes in, we're halfway. Do we have a halfway high five? Yeah. We're starting that trend. Uh, let's just get cracking. Harry, I find when you stop, yeah, you cool down. Okay, hut number four. Had a little stop, a little water break. I'll see you at the top. Beautiful blue sky today. So lucky with the weather. So lucky. If you were watching the series earlier on, I was in this region with Brittany, the little motorbike I was driving around, and the weather was miserable, and I was dreading this hike. Please, God, stay like this for a couple more days. Yeah, yeah,
Around this altitude of 2,600 meters or so, the jungle mossy forest starts to thin out and you enter a more unique zone which becomes a mix of alpine trees and completely unique plants found only here in this particular mountain. And so as you can imagine, it just got more and more beautiful the higher we climbed. Okay, so this is hut number five and seems to be where most people are having their lunch. They do give you a lunch. I've got a lunch in my bag. I'm just not very hungry. The clouds start coming in and it just gets quite cold. So I'm soaking wet from the sweat. So I just want to get cracking really. I think Harry's in the hut. The hut's for the, the guides. So I don't want to rush him. So maybe I'll just wait around, feed the squirrels. It's getting a bit windy, it's getting a bit cold. And I didn't eat my lunch because I'm just not hungry. I'm also a little bit worried that it might rain. Let's get to the safety of base camp. Two more huts to go. Okay. Yeah, even uh, the insect uh, managed to uh, climbing up the slippery wall inside. Oh yeah. But uh, like, we got like uh, a pointing needle, like this. Yeah, to stop them getting out. Uh -huh. That's awesome, man. Yeah. That's really cool. Starting to feel the effects of the altitude now, just in terms of shortness of breath. What was quite easy. An hour ago is a little bit more difficult. How high do you think we are now? Uh, roughly. Yeah, roughly about uh, 2,800. So we're getting up there. Yeah. And I'm just looking up at the blue skies, just so blessed so far to have the weather like this. I think that was one of the big sources of my anxiety before this climb and the stress was having seen the bad weather here during this trip and the, the way the mountain was getting battered by winds and rain and I thought geez is that gonna be me thank you the god of the forest yeah. <laughs> uh, Aki is the god uh, of the mountain no Aki means uh, our, the spirit of the ancestor okay yeah. well thank you Aki yeah. Love you so far. It's just so beautiful. Wow. Okay. Hut number six? Yeah, below, sir. My biggest piece of advice so far, number one, don't worry, like I did, was worrying. Number two, bring Haribo, because <laughs> this, is, this is a lifesaver. <laughs> As you can tell, all of the tall trees in the forests from below have now gone. Up here at 3,000 meters, oxygen is far less abundant and plant life starts to become more sparse. And of course, we could really start to feel it in our lungs. But still, regardless of the struggle, I feel good. I can 
feel my heart, you know, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> yeah, 3,000 plus. It's getting thin, yeah, it's getting thin, yeah. It's normal that uh, you can hear your own uh, heartbeat. Yeah, that's what I can hear, I can hear it going boom, 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 boom. you feel a bit uh, sleepy. Yeah. That's normal. Except you don't get uh, the bad headache or vomiting. Yeah, I hope that doesn't come. It's so beautiful, I can't get... I hope the footage is capturing like the grey ashiness of the barks, the red undertones of the branches and then the greens and the, the blue tones of the leaves and the ferns. It's just epic. Absolutely epic. Love it. I don't know how this uh, day is going to continue being so beautiful because all around us, massive clouds, big storm clouds too. In every direction. Way higher than us too. Coming this way. <laughs> That's the last hut. Yeah. Number six or yeah, seven. Number seven. I've lost count. Yeah. Okay, so just what? 500 uh, meters? 550. The last stretch. Yeah. Happy days. Last stretch to reach base camp. <laughs> Push for the summit tomorrow morning. The last 800 meters, they have 100 meter markers which I quite like. I'm glad they don't do that the whole way though. I'm glad it's just the last little bit. So we've only got 400 left. That weather's rolling in behind us now. And uh, yeah, the end of day one is in sight. This last few hundred meters, we have two conflicting sources of motivation one being we can see we're at the uh, tree line very close to camp the second one is behind thunder and lightning distant storm and then we just had a little bit of drizzle and it's coming this way oh no <laughs> it's just started to rain it was so close i knew this was going to happen i knew we we're going to get wet So, we had made it to base camp at 3,300 meters up here in the thin air. It was where I finally decided to take lunch and to rest my weary body. With the bad weather arriving just in time, it gave me and a few others that had made it up in time a great place to stay dry, to make some friends and to get settled into our dorm room. We also had a safety briefing for the activity in the morning. You see, I wasn't only here to summit the mountain, but I was also enrolled to try out the world's highest via ferrata. Via ferrata is where you attach yourself to cables and hang off the side of mountains. And I'd missed the opportunity to do that recently in Italy and Switzerland. And since this was the world's highest ferrata, I needed to, along with everyone else, learn how to operate the cables and wires so that we could traverse the course the following morning nice and safely. Anyway, I'll explain more about that later because by the evening the weather had gotten much worse, the winds were up, the rain was coming, so I went down and had a delicious dinner, hid away from the bad weather, and then made my way into bed and hoped that I'd get a good amount of sleep for the 2am wake up call. However, this is where the biggest challenge of the climb 
is about to begin. Altitude is no joke. So, last night, in good spirits, great dinner, just hanging out here in the common area with a couple of my new friends. We were just talking. And my heart rate just wouldn't slow down. And I was like, just out of breath, just sat down. We were sat down talking for two hours. And I felt like I was on a treadmill. And my buddy has an Apple Watch and he measured his heart rate and he was like, oh my God, my heart rate's 90. And I said, can I, can I measure mine? And I was 120. 120 heartbeat sat down. <sighs> Which then put me into a little bit of a spiral. Everyone went to bed and I, I went upstairs to speak to the staff. I was freaking out, I was having a little bit of an anxiety attack, to be honest. And they measured, measured my blood thing, you know, with that little clip. And my oxygen level was low and my heart rate was really high. But I think the fact that I had like seven cups of tea to warm up and the caffeine didn't help. Altitude didn't help. And then my anxiety didn't help. So the guy really helped me calm down. And it went down a little bit and I went to bed. I got some sleep. So I'm just gonna take it really, really slowly today. One step at a time. And not push it. <sighs> Wish me luck. I don't know if I'm gonna make it to be honest, but I'm gonna try. Okay, look who it is. Harry, did you, did you sleep okay? Oh uh, yeah, I sleep very well last night, yeah. Good for you. Uh -huh. um, I just told him about last night and my heart rate and my oxygen level and he's told me that we're gonna have to take it easy. Yeah, yeah th that's the best way. <laughs> and if I feel worse, we're gonna go back down. But we're gonna try, we're gonna try. Now, what time is it now? It's, uh, it's quarter to three. <laughs> And uh, there's, a, there's one checkpoint where we have to show our pass. Let me make sure I have my pass. How are the tune? Where's my pass? Okay, so I've got my pass. I've got my passport. You have to show your passport. And then we have to pull up some rocks and it's going to be super crazy, right? And super, super fun. Yeah, especially the first 100 meters after the mm. press. Yeah. Do, do you think we should leave right now or do you think we should wait a little bit? Uh, since so it's only one of you, so we just moving forward uh, slowly, steady. Yeah, but we should leave now, or should yeah. we wait? Yeah, well, we should leave now. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. I was hoping you could say, yeah. "No, let's stay for another half an hour and mm -hmm. have a croissant." All right. Wish me luck. Bye, bye, hut. One hundred meters, not even one hundred meters. My heart is pounding. I'm gonna have to go so slowly, painfully slowly. I've just apologized to Harry. <laughs> Everything's fine. Legs fine, back fine, headache gone. It's just my heart. Boom, boom, boom. And that's a symptom of acute altitude sickness, he told me. So I have to be really careful. I'm definitely the last person, there's no one behind me. And I'm going ridiculously slow, I'm going like an old man. I'm going one step at a time. I could be going quicker, but I just don't want to push it. 
I just don't want to push it in the distance. You can see the storms on the other side of the island. It's beautiful, man. Absolutely beautiful. This is where they check your pass, make sure you have all your paperwork. And then from here we have 1.6 kilometers to the summit. That was only 1.1 from the hut, from where we woke up. Um, but that, that, that last 10 minutes was so much fun. Scrambling across the rocks with the moonlight and the flags and the lights. And we managed to overtake a few people. <laughs> so I'm not the last person anymore, yay. Hello. Hello. Okay. Okay. okay, Harry, we made it with one hour to spare. Yeah. And uh, another 1.6 to go. Uh, the better. Let's do it. Yeah. No fannying around today. Let's just crack on. I think going slow and being one of the last people really helped me. Because right now I just got a bit of a dodgy ticker, but I think we'll be all right. Yippah! Okay. All right. All right. Let's go. Go. <laughs> I've been fortunate enough to see some incredible sights during my travels, and I've climbed some beautiful mountains as well. But climbing up this beast in the full moonlight, just bright enough to cast silhouettes of the stronger climbers ahead, was pure magic. Annoyingly, my headaches returned with a rage and my heart was beating out of its chest. And I felt like I was slowly dying. <laughs> and sadly, dozens of people had given up, turned back and called it just short of the peak. And there were lots of piles of sick from people who had obviously had it much worse than me. But because I knew going one step at a time would give me the best chance of success, I pushed on up. This is incredible, absolutely mental. Full moon, Venus and the stars. Incredible, 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 incredible. So close. If you have a friend who so want to climb here. We've got 100 meters to go. Everyone's coming down. It's gonna be a little bit busy. Sure. This bump for the last hundred. Four thousand meters. I got a headache. My heart's beating out of his chest. But we're getting up there. But we can make it to Maurice. 
This last 100 meters is absolute torture. Two steps and you're out of breath. Your heart's just Okay. Fist bump. All right. Summit. We made it. Fist bump. We made it, man. 4,095.2 meters. And actually, this mountain is still growing for two millimeters a year. And the last measurement of this mountain been done in 1995, maybe. Yeah, more high up, actually. <laughs> Man, it is such a beautiful, beautiful moment. But we don't want to linger because everyone else wants to take a picture now. Do a picture now? Fuck yeah! yeah. <laughs> What's your channel? What's your channel? We have to thank you. Yes. My, uh, my YouTube channel is Next Level Adventures. Next oh. Level Adventures. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I say Paddy Doyle, they go, what? <laughs> Paddy, uh, that's referred to the uh, to the race here. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible moment to get up here, but uh, it's freezing. I can't breathe, and I just want to get back down. <laughs> it's a funny old game, isn't it, climbing a mountain? So that was it. We had done it. I could not have made it up without Harry and I could not have achieved this feat without the willpower of you guys watching at home. If you have enjoyed today's adventure, please let me know in the comments and give me a challenge of another peak and maybe I'll take you up on that one too. I didn't make it back down in time for the Via Ferrata, sadly. Um, they have a cutoff time of 6.30 in the morning back down towards near the base camp and I barely made it to the summit. So I just didn't have time to do both. Of course the Ferrata looks incredible and it would be so epic and it was really unique thing to try and do for the channel. So maybe I'll come back and try again in the future when the summit is no longer my main priority. But anyway, Mount Kinabalu is complete. The highest peak in Malaysia has been conquered and this mini-series to Borneo is now over. Thank you so much for watching as always and I'll see you next week from the incredible island of Sri Lanka. <laughs> <laughs>